What's going on here then? The invasion of Southern Tyrol? Or do a few wannabe Rambos just want to play war? Wrong and wrong again. This is a get-together of historic military vehicle fans in the Dolomites. The scene is more than a little uncanny. A sea of camouflage and people kitted out in military gear as if they've walked straight out of a bad war movie. And heavily armored cars. But this has little to do with war games. A love of technology draws these people to Alta Badia with their colossal vehicles in tow. The military vehicle scene is spread far and wide. The vehicles are only suitable for driving off-road, not on. Many fans go to huge efforts and pay phenomenal transport costs to meet like-minded enthusiasts. I don't live far away, about 400 kilometers from here, but I absolutely had to come and have a look at the other vehicles. My car isn't really made for traveling long distances, it guzzles too much petrol. This extremely rare Poncine 6x6 got here under its own steam. Now its battery has gone on strike. Easily solved. There's no shortage of powerful towing vehicles around. The French manufacturer Poncine planned to sell the 6x6 to the military, but it was out of their price range. As a result, only 12 models were made. It takes its 4x4 technology from the US off-road vehicle General Mutt. The differentials at the front, center and back are all the same. The front and back differentials have actuators, which is a very practical feature. Theoretically, you could make a propeller shaft for a boat engine by attaching drums or tubes on either side of the vehicle, and it would be able to float. Then you could attach a shaft with a propeller to the rear differential, and it would even be able to propel itself forward. The opportunities are endless for eccentric types, amateurs or engineers. But even without its swimming wings, Otto Bussinger likes to take his ponce in for a dip. The 2.1-litre turbo diesel engine produces a torque of 180 newton meters. Six power-driven wheels provide traction. Even without locks, this vehicle is a great off-roader. I was driving up in the mountains, driving everywhere over rough and smooth terrain. Sometimes I drove over really big rocks, and one wheel would be on the ground, for example, and the other one would just be hanging in the air. And because there's no locking differential, that wheel would go into wheel spin and wouldn't move forward. So you sway the car a bit and the wheel touches the ground again, and then you can drive on. The military vehicles are also making headway, albeit at snail's pace. The military convoy crawls its way through the Dolomites. The White Scout Scar is one of the quirkiest vehicles. In 1938, American truck manufacturer White began to retrofit his vehicles for the military, adding peculiar technical features. Its unique feature is the roller on the front bumper. On steep mountains, the vehicle would usually bore into the ground, but the roller lifts it up. The aim was to augment the angle of driving slope. A nice idea, but it doesn't really work. The vehicles were barely put to the test at all during the turbulent war years. In addition to the useless roller, the White Scout proved to have other failings. The immense heat of the engine warms up the fuel pump. The petrol evaporates in the pipes and doesn't even make it to the carburetor. If this happens, you stop the car and let it cool off until the petrol starts flowing again. A classic design defect, but for Mauro Ritali, the car's failings make it all the more endearing. After the war, the vehicles were only used for civilian purposes. I'm 59 now. I first used the vehicle working on the fields and only have good memories of it. But when I started collecting later on, I wanted the original, fully armed vehicle. Military car lovers are crazy about historical technology. Their uniforms give the affair an authentic touch, like vintage car fans in their leather motoring caps. But looking at the fleet of vehicles, you do ask yourself, wouldn't they be just as fascinating if you took away the machine guns, bazookas and steel helmets? Like the rare Alfa Romeo Matta, which means something close to crazy guy, or the Fiat Campagnolo, the country lad. 
Other countries were less inventive when they named their off-road vehicles. The German equivalent is simply Kubelwagen, or bucket seat car, and is too lightweight for a four-wheel drive. Quite unlike the Pensin, with its six-wheel drive, it leads the way in all-wheel technology. But what few people know is that the world's first production vehicle could be equipped with four driven wheels. In the case of the famous T model by Ford or the Tin Lizzy, you could order a front drive axle and the corresponding four wheel drive mechanism, but not from Ford. You could order it from another supplier or an axle manufacturer. And this meant that Tin Lizzy could pretty much function as a 4x4 vehicle. The uncontested forefather of the Jeep family is the Willis, first constructed in 1940. This indestructible, compact, all-terrain car created a whole new class of vehicle and is still sure to give you a fabulous ride off-road. What 4x4 means for me? Excitement, leisure, being in nature, driving about with friends, enjoying the car in all its original glory. The military car fans are extremely scathing of their vehicle's past. Are they glorifying war? No chance. It's comforting to know that their interest lies in the historical and sturdy four-wheel drive technology. They're used to having to defend their unusual hobby. With this in mind, it wouldn't hurt to leave the machine guns at home.